الزول في اللون مرحبتين بكم على مباشر الأحد مع سناء المنصوري تابعوني على الانستغرام وكل يوم أحد مع ضيوفي المتميزين In Kif Kif Bledi, we are immigrants and children of immigrants from Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Lebanon and Senegal. We are working to promote traditional dances with a modern approach. In this video, you can see the comparison with Malish clip and some of our shows. So you can notice strong similarities with our choreographies that are on YouTube from 2017. We decided to take legal action with a lawyer from Paris. فنانة أو مصممة الرقص الصاخب زي ما نقوله الوركينج دانس هي حتعطينا تفاصيل أكثر بس أنا زي ما قلت لكم حنتكلموا باللغة الإنجليزية لأن الأودينس متاع ضيفتي يتواصل معها باللغة الإنجليزية خلوني هنا بعد دعوة أول حاجة وإذا ما سمعتونيش طبعا بكري اللي ما حضروش معي المقدمة قلت لكم كل سنه وانتم طيبين وليكم هلبه عليا وليا هلبه عليكم فكل سنه وانتم طيبين على رمضان و... و... وشكرا على المتابعه الدائمه لهذا الحساب ازول راسيا هاو ار يو جود ايفنينغ ازول السلام عليكم هلو ايفربادي ام فاين ثانك يو ان يو I'm good, thank you so much. So how is the election going in France? <laughs> oh, it was as expected. So we have current uh, president on first place and unfortunately Marine Le Pen in second place who is yeah. from people who really don't like us, let's say like that. <laughs> so we will see next week for the final results. Let's hope it, it gets well and um, the right person will be in the right place. Inshallah. <laughs> so, um, Rasia, I, I tried obviously to speak about um, your music, your dancing, your art in general, which is very unique. I've tried to show your video, which I'll add later on, um, but uh, it stopped, life stopped all of a sudden. I think it's because of the copyright, which is our core talking today. We are talking yes. about copyright. Um, so, um, Rasia is an Amazigh Moroccan choreographer, um, designs uh, dancing, uh, developed uh, a new dance, um, um, obviously based on working dance, but it's the interesting thing is, is that you've, you are mixing it uh, with the North African, your roots um, dance, and that's what makes it interesting. More colors, more ideas, it says something. So uh, let's talk about what you do first, and then we can talk about um, the problem with your movements and how it's been used by a certain artist um, without uh, going back to you and taking your permission, obviously, to use that. Um, please tell me about this walking dance and how did you start this idea? Where did it come from? Yes, sure. First of all, sorry, I'm a little bit sick. <laughs> okay. I'm sleeping, <laughs> but it's okay. okay. Yes, okay. and um, about the dance, um, I started very uh, little girl, as an every girl, to, to dance with family, Moroccan holidays, Moroccan family, of course, but also uh, I had the opportunity, thanks to Grant, to go to the conservatory in Paris. So I'm, I'm uh, a, a children of uh, immigrants from uh, Morocco, from east of Morocco, which uh, was very poor area. So we have a lot of people who uh, went uh, in, in France uh, during the 60s, 70s to help to build the country. And after, the, the, the mainly men, they brought uh, the wife and then they made uh, children who were born like me in France. So we are around four or five millions like me in France, on 60, uh, around 60 million people. So okay. I have this grant uh, for modern jazz dance classes uh, that was very good uh, training skills. And uh, after I said, no, I like uh, underground. And I had three big brothers who are really um, in love with funk music, funk music, disco, etc. So I really grew up with this love of funk music 
that was very popular for North African uh, kids of immigrants in France. All so right. they went to the club, etc. Yes. And then when I started hip hop, <laughs> there are hip hop stars uh, from the 70s, from the 80s, like the locking, the locking. So it's with the arms also. And quickly, thanks to the locking, I discovered walking. Uh, thanks to a woman who is from Los Angeles, what is working? It's a dance style who has been created by LGBT black American people in the 70s because on this time, disco music was like the, the music, uh, like the new one, and it was a bit strange for, for old people and a lot of mm. black American produced a lot of music, so it was like very uh, involving uh, minorities. Um, so this uh, dance consists of uh, like taking poses of uh, women who are very fierce, like, uh, uh, you know, the black and white movies in the, in the 50s, so very beautiful and, uh, as we say in France, très classe. Uh, yeah. So after, with the music, these poses moved into uh, dance. Mm -hmm. And then it developed, so mixing uh, those LGBT people going to the club with uh, non-LGBT. And then this dance became popular, especially with a, a TV show called Soul Train. So Soul Train was a very popular uh, TV show, and you can, you can see the walking dance into it. So it's not very very new dance. Um, it has no. been a little bit forgotten yes in the in the 90s maybe because disco music was not hype anymore and so uh, in 2004 i discovered this style thanks to the hip hop locking and i really felt in love because i found this feminine but also powerful yeah and uh, yes it then, is very powerful uh, it is yes, very powerful, very powerful. And, and i think you made it even more powerful i think you noticed that but um um, you have, it, it's probably not been uh, so popular as much, but you brought it back to life. And um, I will mention to my audience your account. I have discovered your account. And when I was watching, as I watch your videos, they, uh, you made it even more powerful by combining it with the Northern African um, ideas, like in the, in the, the outfits, uh, in the dancing, in what you put on your, you know, in the tattoos. Um, and as we know, women uh, uh, or the North African culture uh, used to be very uh, empowering for women. So it seems to me like when you added this to it, it became, it became even more powerful. Is that why you actually are doing it? Or is there a, another reason why you mixed it with the North African culture? Yes, you are totally, um, you are totally uh, right. And uh, also to, to, to tell my own story, that I'm mm -hmm. born in France. When I go back to Morocco, people tell me, ah, oh, you are from France. When I'm in France, people tell me, ah, oh, you are Arab. And I say, no, I'm Amazir. And they tell me, what is Amazir? So I'm like, people, they just put us in, you know, big category. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, and it's uh, more complex than that. So by mixing two parts of my uh, of my own lifestyle, like I love to be modern, to travel, to study, uh, to meet no, new people, but also I'm really, really linked to my roots. So it's a way uh, to combine all my two lives into dance. And I created this style uh, 12 years ago. And uh, yeah. it's like unique because it's like, how can we mix something from Los Angeles with something from Ujda or, you know, North Africa? And I'm very proud. So that makes people from working in the hip hop community knowing Amazigh culture and yeah. uh, people from North Africa, like today, I'm very proud <laughs> maybe to talk about working, maybe, I don't know, for the first time for, for Libyan you audience. Do. You glow when you talk about it and you shine. It's very clear that you love it. You have, created, you. You have created a group. You have a school, I think, uh, in 2017. Tell me about that and how did it happen and how's the reaction? Yes. In fact, um, as I said, I was really obsessed about hip hop, about walking, about traveling to the USA, coming back, traveling for battles. So I was battling and uh, performances, shows in Paris. 
And finally, around 2010, I was just like, why we never see North African traditional dances on theaters, uh, on big places in France. We have a lot of beautiful places and we never saw our cultures because they are badly seen like subcultures in France. Mm -hmm. So I decided, um, because I was used to do competitions, international competitions, wants to enter uh, like what they called folklore. I don't like this word because in French, folklore is something like dancing for tourists. So you see how uh, in English uh, translation, the words are different in French. So I entered in Germany very big uh, competition with another girl uh, and we, we danced Regeda, that is from my city, Ujda in Morocco, uh, East Morocco from Berken, etc which is male warrior dance, and we won. And I was just like, oh, wow, 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 wow. What's this? What, what is it? Regada is a, a, a war dance that is uh, practiced mainly by men using shoulders, using feet, and you tap on the floor to show that you uh, won against the enemy. So it's a military dance. So it's a, uh, uh, some sort of a, it needs a lot of, um, is it, it's, it needs a lot of, um, um, how do I say, it? fitting. You need to be fit to do it. You have to be. No, not really, but you need power, especially in the shoulders. Mm. And you need to count because uh, the, the, the players, the Bendir players are playing uh, counts like only on odd counts, like one, like three, five, Three, so it's very difficult. Yes, right. and, um, you, and you so it's, it's traditionally done by men, not women. In fact, men, uh, women were used to, to to dance it, but not on the big place. Yeah. The big place is still still for men, but uh, I decided on this time uh, ten years ago to create like the first female. Uh, Regada uh, dance group in France or Europe. Uh, so we started uh, to do uh, after this, uh, um, in fact, competition with my, yeah. my duet. We, we made like a casting and I said, hey, all Moroccan and Algerian, because in Algeria they have <laughs> part the same, which is Alawi, they're coming to the casting. And finally, no, only French white girls came. Wow. Yes, and dancing, they dance. And I was just like, oh, but they are like very, you see, very classy. And how are we going to make them uh, dance together? So I, I worked first with this group, but I didn't feel something like uh, that I can go further, very deep uh, with the roots being alone, uh, you know, coming from these roots. It was a bit weird, uh, like not balanced. So that's why in 2017, I didn't make any casting any audition, any, anything. I just talked to people I knew from here, from here. And then we uh, built this group called Kif Kif Bledi. Mm -hmm. So Bledi, like my blood, and uh, Kif Kif, because it's a word that exists in the French dictionary. Oh. That comes from the colonization in Algeria. Yes. I thought when you called it that, in my head, obviously, I translated Kif Kif as like the same, same. same yes. As, same as my Bledi. It is, but in French you can say, oh, c'est kif kif, that means really the same, 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 kif kif. Same. And it became a French word also, is to show that a culture can be also uh, integrated to the French culture. And we are here, we exist. We are not like in a no man's land. And also yeah. kif, kif, kiffé in, uh, in French means uh, enjoying a lot. Oh, that's like, a perfect that's... word for it then. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that was amazing because uh, there were Moroccan, Algerian, Tunisian, Lebanon. Uh, at the beginning, there was a girl from Ireland, Ireland, yeah, uh, one from Poland. Oh, wow. mm. yes. And now we are full 100% from Africa and Middle East because we have also a girl from uh, Senegal and another, another one from uh, Lebanon. Wow. Um, and yeah. what are the conditions to accept people to join your group? Do, is there, do you have certain conditions that they have to have a certain, um, I don't know, uh, experience or something or anyone can join? 
No, that is what is amazing in this group. So the, the, my whole goals by growing was to be uh, professional because we don't exist in the French scene. So I said, I'm not going back to what I did by myself, academical, like conservatory, like this and this, because we, we didn't learn this by, uh, by taking classes. All people in my group, they all uh, learned their dances thanks to the family. Like so me. they have a basic from their culture, their own culture. Yes, but yeah. they, they thought, like me at the beginning, that it was not enough that uh, you have uh, to have uh, a certification or something, a diploma in dance to be a professional. So we were about ourselves doing a big, big work to say, hey, we have something precious we know dances that nobody maybe knows in France, mm -hmm. uh, like we, we do. And finally, we worked on that. And I worked with this group by mixing my academical skills from the conservatory, from the, the hip hop also, with traditional skills. And so uh, every, everybody is um, involved. For example, I had the opportunity to learn the first Zeni uh, Tunisian dance that oh, I didn't yeah. know, yeah. thanks to the That's Tunisian Yes. Yeah. So, and I think that there are links also with the Libyan dances. Yeah. Mm, it's very similar. Yeah. And uh, yes, it's very interesting to go deep in all people who are in my group and who uh, taught us, for example, the Lebanese Darke. Uh, and we all mix the skills, and now we are able to perform like under, uh, uh, around 15 dances, traditional dances from uh, different wow, countries. Wow, very interesting. So everybody who comes in brings in some of his own heritage and some from their own culture, like maybe this Irish yeah. lady, she would bring an Irish dance from, you know, the ancient times or something that they learned from their grand grandparents. That's very, very unique indeed. It's, it's mm. so much better than all the diplomas and, and, and the other. <laughs> because it's original and, and it's really nice to see a school forming something like this bringing in the world's heritage let's call it not just a, a certain region heritage it's it's wonderful um Rosia, also you um you have um you have developed uh, something else not just dancing or let's say you evolved you you mix things together and you show in your dance how to put things together and that is the outfits and the jewelry and and clearly you're very interested in that and i can see you're even today in my life thank you so much for preparing it's very clever cool. <laughs> um, so um how do you um link that to uh, uh how do you decide when you are on a stage which outfit and which um Makeup to put, uh, does it have to be, for instance, if you're doing a North African dance or you're doing a Seuss or you're doing something and then you put the same jewelry and some outfit or, or you do just mix everything and then you talk about it. Yes. Audience. So as an artist, I'm very lucky because I um, have three different uh, environments uh, of performance. I'm involved in what we call globally the hip hop community uh, in France and Europe. So as a working, uh, um, let's say not the first generation, maybe just after who uh, brought uh, working culture in France, a lot to uh, teach, uh, to organize events, etc. So I started like uh, uh, around 2008. So I, uh, when I perform, I was used uh, in hip hop like community. I was used to wear something linked to the, this community. So maybe not coming like that. But now um, that I'm mixing things, I can go like that in the hip hop community and they will love that. But first I was doing this. Mm -hmm. So as a worker, I'm not coming like, you know, uh, it's not like um, how we say a cliche, uh, like coming with baggy and this. No, you can be feminine in the, in the hip hop. Then I have the traditional people, for example, are calling me to give Moroccan classes, dance, dances classes, sorry, and to perform. So when I do that, I like to be like authentic, but with a modern way. But for example, I can dance with a tukshita or kaftan, that is traditional. And then 
I also evolved in uh, the fusion of these two worlds by what I, I, I want to, to do, my creativity. So it happened before being really involved deeply in the jewelry that I had a costume uh, being a bird. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a costume being a superhero from another galaxy. So I like this creativity. I like like uh, the comics and futurists. Um, uh, you know, inspiration. So I'm mixing all of this by creating my own uh, um, um, performances uh, according to the music. That's very important for me, the music and my inspiration. But now I'm more and more evolving with this uh, character character of Rai Saleh that I had created in 2016 mm. after being called Raisa in Morocco as an artist. And uh, it happens a lot that I put same ocean. For example, those ones are the replication of my grandmother's ones. So I love putting them very often because uh, she passed away several years ago. So uh, I put them very often. And they suit you. They suit you. You have a very Thank you. face. Everything you do suits you, Rosia. Um, even, you know, I've, I've tried to share some um, different dances. So, like, so the, we, we watched this uh, video of you doing um, something that's related to uh, the originals uh, in North Africa. But then we watch you doing hip hop. And it's like, so modern, like, so different. So you, you, every, all of it suits you, the outfits and, and, uh, and the working and all that. So it's lovely. Um, talking about uh, going back to Morocco. So you said earlier that when you were in France, they put you in this phrase, uh, frame that you were an Arab. And because obviously um, that's all the, the terms used in Europe, it's a political term and they are all just link us to it, the Arabic world, they don't know the fact that we have our own identity, they don't know the details. And then you go to Morocco and they're like, oh, you're uh, French now. So you have, but you feel you have your own identity because you are, you're cherishing what you had and what you have both together. So you created your own identity. So we know in France, uh, you have your, and, and in, in Europe and America, you have your own performances and you, people watch you. And of course, I'm sure you are connecting and you're explaining and you're telling them what it is, whether it's through your art or, or you're directly talking. Um, your content on Instagram, by the way, everyone, you should watch, um, go to uh, Rossia, um, is account on Instagram. It's beautiful. It's full of wonderful videos very interesting to watch and then um when you go to morocco do you perform in morocco do you have audience in morocco um did you bring that to morocco and um have you like experienced the reaction of the moroccans well it's a very good question because when i started to dance as, as uh, i said i started to dance very early it was something to hide because I'm coming from a very traditional uh, family, uh, Amazia tribe for a long time. Sorry? Conservative so, family? Conservative, yes. Okay. Conservative. Excuse me for my English. If it's not perfect, please Your tell English me. English is perfect is better than mine. <laughs> Thank okay. you. So very conservative family. And uh, still today, um, uh, I, I'm very careful. That's why I have a stage name also to protect my family, to protect myself. Because as a woman, uh, maybe it's the case also in Libya, when you say shtaha, shtaha yeah, yeah, as yeah. a dancer, yeah. it's a very bad world. It's like dancing cabaret and being a, a bad, bad woman. So I was very scared of that. Not really for me, but for my mother, for my family to say, hey, your right, daughter is dancing, them. she's not a good yeah, girl. Society, yeah. mm. Mm. We have this way as, uh, and it's not only dance, it's also singers as women. Uh, in North Africa, it's very difficult. And you can say, hey, but we, you are from diaspora, you are in Europe. No, it's the same for us. We have this reputation to be very careful of. So I was very scared and I said to myself, I will never perform to Morocco because they will take me 
uh, I don't know where I'll, they will just put me tomatoes. I don't know. <laughs> but it happened. So it's, uh, not, it's, not, it's not something that you do in Morocco then? You can't perform in Morocco? No, because in Morocco, for me, uh, dancer as a, as a job doesn't exist. Everybody knows how to uh, know how to dance. It's social uh, dance. It's for only events, only for weddings, and you cannot go on stage as a woman and tuck, 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 tuck. you see how people are connected. But in 2016, when I had this first group, uh, we became like buzzing on YouTube on Urgada women. Uh, video dances because on this time nobody was doing that. So we have been invited in the biggest uh, Regada Alawi event festival in Morocco and I, I was on that to, to say no. I was so scared. I was just like no, we cannot go. How is it going to happen? And it was in, in a village in Dibdu, uh, organized by dear Si uh, Hamdawi. So I'm uh, uh, telling Best him Yeah. Yeah. And um, we couldn't go with all the groups, so we, go, we went only two of us. And when we came in the city, we were like big stars. Like, uh, and this wow. time the group was called Shikshuka, so it was written on the beginning of the, when we go, uh, we enter on the, on the city, Shikshuka, welcome. And people, and the they recognized us, and they were so mm. kind. And I said, but you are like the land of Regada. Why are you bringing girls from Paris mm. in Morocco to dance together. I, uh, if it's hip hop or something like new, okay. And they say, because it's really modern what you do. Yeah. So I understood that what is modern is choreographies. Yeah. Because I'm working with choreographies and choreographies is, is if yes, it's something new in traditional dances uh, vision. Mm. So then, uh, yes, we performed uh, there, and before that, we performed in the theater of Ujda. And then, after I couldn't go with the Kif Kif Lady because I was pregnant, but they have been invited uh, in Casablanca in the Design Week, Fashion Design Week. And uh, we had plans to perform in Algeria, in Tunisia, but there was COVID. But yes, that was very something like having this first experience that was very, very good with very um, people who really enjoyed our uh, art and uh, being called Finnena, like the artist, it was something very emotional for me, very um, something that maybe I had in my own mind, like being yeah. very open with my education. Yeah, it has changed the idea that you had, that you, you can't be exposed in Morocco because dancing is something shameful, like in North Africa for women. But I was, I am, I am surprised that you said that, and I'm very happy that you went and you had accepted this invitation so that you now you know that, um, you know, it's not everywhere and uh, it depends, I mean, how you perform to, pre to present yourself. I mean, there's an artist that I have met um, uh, a while ago. I interviewed him before COVID. Um, they call him a rice in Morocco. His name is Fatah Abu. And he uh, did similar to what you did, but not dancing. Uh, he did um, uh, Amazigh uh, singing and he taught American students, American students uh, learned how to sing um, and they're very difficult, mm -hmm. not, the, not the one that we speak today. And uh, he's, uh, he's went on now in America, in America, uh, Florida and in, in, in Morocco. So you and your band need to go uh, touring in North Africa because what you're doing is amazing um even for north africans is unknown um you're not only you're not only educating uh, people in europe you're also going to educate people in north africa about this um, um this beautiful dance that you're doing the culture and the walking dance because i like you said it's an old um one and not everybody knows about it you need to go on google and read about it and the history of walking and where did it start and where was it performed and it's amazing a young lady like you who you know takes all these old beautiful valuable art 
and put it in uh, a new identity and modern one that uh, everyone else today enjoys with all the pressure and mm. there isn't enough time and you know and it doesn't exist that much you have talked about choreography and uh, which brings me now to the the important uh, topic of tonight and that is the copyright and and it's a shame that um, I don't know if it happens, I haven't heard of it before and it happened in Europe or in America, but it's a shame that happens in the Middle East or in North Africa that big stars, they call themselves big stars, and they are because they became extremely famous, they made so much money, and yet um, when they are going to do um, uh, an album or a video clip, they're happy to take somebody else's idea who is not very as well uh, known as they are without paying them the money. And I don't understand why, even though they understand because they are professional. And they know if someone takes their work, their idea, they will have, a, they will have to sue them. Um, first of all, well done to you to spot it. And um, me and my girls, I have three girls. There, two of them are artists, and we watched the videos that you put on your on your um, on your account, comparing Maryam Faris's video clip with your dance, and also shared it with few friends, and they didn't uh, only say that kind. You you were very kind in the video, and you said we noticed some similarities, <laughs> but they said it's actually. Um, exactly the same identical it's not even similarity it's identical so tell us about this when you saw the video how did you feel because obviously stealing a pencil or a book or money even is something um, maybe you can don't care about but stealing your own ideas is extremely uh, hurtful i think for an artist so tell me how you felt about it. What did you do as soon as you saw it? Um, some people may say, oh, you should be very happy that someone like Miriam Ferris <laughs> uh, used your, uh, your choreography. Yes, okay, but not the right way. <laughs> yeah, so I will be very, um, it will be very surprising what I'm going to say, but uh, my group and me, we were just like, oh, okay, and nothing. First, we saw the video clip when it was out really at the beginning. And then after we said, why did we say okay? Because unfortunately, it was not the first time. As I said, when I started my work of modernizing traditional dances into um, choreographies with some part of freestyle and putting a little bit of walking um, flavor on it for example doing a step and putting arms more arms or like pose and then we dance shabby you see it's like you know your your own side signature and people then after they know your own signature so there was like several steps in this story so first we were really like oh it's really it's really it's really like all choreographies but we didn't do anything we didn't talk about that and then people started to contact us especially mm. me Oh, uh, Lay, Lay, did you work with Miriam Fares? I said, no. Oh, but it's very similar. And then people started starting. So what happened? We decided, or we didn't talk really very lot of, with my group about that. But then the Amazir look challenge came. So she made like a communication after her clip. And this Amazir look challenge really was too much for me. Uh, if people don't know what it is about, you can find it uh, 3.5 million views on Miriam Fares' uh, account. And she's like in her house, hey, let's play. Let's do an Amazil challenge. And we are going to do a look what, with what we have in her, 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 um, uh, her room. So she started to put uh, only fantasy jewelry, like necklaces on the head. Like, I, don't, I didn't understand why football balls on the head, uh, scarf, I don't know where it comes from. Nothing, zero, zero. Let's be, it's a fact. Zero, zero, uh, Amazir, zero. Let's 
talk and focus really on what is Amazir Jalori. So she was and educating, um, not educating, spreading false information. And, exactly. And, and it, talking about something she doesn't know anything about. First, she doesn't know about. Secondly, she didn't put inside. And third, let's be honest, it's very, very, very tricky to talk about Amazir Jalori because we have a very sad story that yeah. grandmothers mainly they sold their uh, jewelry because they needed money, because it was colonization, because they had for Algeria, somebody told me we had to rebuild the, cul yeah, the, the country the after, behind it. Yes, yeah. after independence. So the women, they were giving their jewelry to the state, to the government. So you, we know, and when I do my uh, videos, a lot of people tell me, oh, I lost. And last week I have been in Paris in an auction where they were selling Amazil jewelry. So that means only men came to buy that, to resell that. Um, more, more expensive. So it's about business. So being, uh, having this lack of respect yeah. about or ancestors or female ancestors and their jewelry first, when I saw that, it was for me worse than yeah. being copied in the clip. Yeah. Being copied, be copied uh, on or YouTube videos, it's already happened a lot of times with Eastern Europe dancers. They are doing competition or they are teaching um, a dance class. Um, they really love traditional without dance. Giving, without giving references that it's your... No, they don't your, ask. They pick up. It no, happened. We have ask, but they should at least put a reference. That they don't. The they don't, don't keep. They don't. Yes. They don't ask. They don't put the credit. They don't pay us. It happened all, at least six, seven times already with all choreography, same music, same kind of uh, costume, everything copied. What can we do? I just ask people, why are you doing that, etc. We have been invited in Russia in 2019, and when we performed. We went to a change of clothes. It was the Zemi Tunisian dance. And we heard the music again. I was just like, oh, guys, I made a mistake. I sent twice the same music. No, it was a Russian group who was doing the same show oh that we goodness. did before. <laughs> Using your music. <laughs> so I already had this experience of plagiarism mm -hmm. by my eyes. And yeah. I said, no, you can, I was very angry. I couldn't hide that. I said, no, you cannot do that. And people, Russian people told me, you have to be proud that we copy you. I no, said, okay. No, that's not. What that's can not I the do? the right way to do it. When you copy, you need to copy, but also mention and the reference that we, so um, I, what are you doing to now after this experience? Are you doing any legal actions to protect your work and your art? Because it's like a collection. It's like I am a collector. I love to collect good art, but obviously I protect it. I know it costs money. I have to pay the lawyers to do it. But um, there's no point of uh, collect a piece of art if you're not going to... Uh, 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 protect it because then everyone will just do copies and it'll be in every living room and on maybe uh, cards uh, or on books covers and everywhere so why why do I have it if everyone's gonna have it so um, how, what do you do to protect your art now are you are you thinking of registering you know in a way that like what I did when I tried now to go live and put the music, live stopped. <laughs> but that was Instagram. That is Instagram. Recognize the music. So what are you going to do about this to protect your art from, um, you know, piracy? Yeah, in fact, we didn't think about protection or, or, or not because first we couldn't expect that we had followers, we had people coming to our classes, we had people paying for us to perform. Um, we were very like, uh, not naive, but uh, telling, okay, we don't have this uh, pretension of being uh, like, uh, not real artist, but to protect our art because it yeah. was about sharing. Register. So your, your that's why in the beginning you had brand. Sorry? Register yeah. your work as a brand. Yes. Yeah, so, so that's why at the beginning we were putting all the videos 
like 10 minutes Available. like we don't care yes you can watch and it's cool because we had we had videos with more than 1 million in the Miriam Fares clip you have extracts of all videos that had already more than 1 million views on YouTube it's not something like a, a little artist that nobody knows we we have our audience and um Yes, just to, to make a link with what I said previously, uh, when I saw this uh, Amazia challenge, I said it was too much. So we did this little 20 seconds comparison and then we were shocked. We were shocked because um, when you put the same um, extract, you see that it's exactly as you said, the same hand, same count. Yeah, I and some people that don't understand that it's a work, it's a choreography. So. Indeed, a lot of people in Morocco told me, but you have to be proud. Something from Middle East, somebody from Middle East copied you. What do you want? You are doing that for the They best. didn't copy you, no? they stole from you. There's a big difference. I'm always, always like, mm. no, <laughs> as you they, saw, they, they, they stole. My this thoughts is about stealing. That. This is stealing mm. ideas. And to go, it. And, and, yes. to go and buy something, like a, a piece of something, you pay money and buy it, that's fine. But Uh, to create an idea, it's a lot of work, and it's very. There are a lot of issues. Yes, mm. lot of issues. First, uh, we never have have been contacted. So before put, putting this video, uh, we tried to contact them. Nobody answered. So we put the video. I didn't expect that the video will make two hundred thousands of view views in three days, and people But, commented a lot, shared a lot. Around? Instagram? On Instagram. In Instagram. Twitter? Twitter is known for hashtagging famous people and mm. also um, legal institutions and organizations. Have you worked on Twitter? No, because we were used to have a Twitter, but after it was a lot of work, so we didn't do that. We focused on Instagram mainly and Facebook. And this is where we have more audience. And after people told us, yes, you have to take a lawyer, you have to take legal actions. And we said, okay, because we had no answers. And uh, we have been recommended, uh, we had a, a contact who recommended us a very good lawyer uh, about um, protection of uh, this uh, artist's uh, productions. And then he sent a letter, an official letter first, Uh, to say it, um, I'm, I mean, um, how we say in English is alamiab. That means uh, we can talk together to solve this issue without. So your going... lawyer speaks to her lawyer, basically. Uh, we don't know if it's her lawyer, but he sent to the the address we had, uh, which was the management, uh, maybe I'm correct. Yeah. Yes, and they received the letter because uh, he sent with the receipt uh, that they have to sign. But they didn't answer. Mm. So this is where we stand now. It's a little bit long because as we are in France, we're living in France, we choose to take a lawyer from France in Paris. So she's living in the, she's based, uh, her management uh, desk is based in Lebanon. So it took time and we didn't have answer. So now we have to think of what we can do because suing somebody for uh, copyrights in uh, North African dances which are on YouTube in a French uh, country is quite complicated. Yes, it's true, it's but I think, uh, I think social media works better than legal actions these days. So I think also, for, an artist, for an artist to worry about their reputation, especially a big artist, I think if you get media talk about it, you go interviewing, you know, interviews on TVs, you, you go on TV shows and uh, tag, tag, tag and uh, hashtags uh, on Twitter, you need a, a big uh, media campaign. And I think that what will worry an artist and not the legal actions, the reputation, you know, their name you are right. is very important. You are right. Yes. So it's a lot of work also. It's a lot of... Uh... You know, as we say, mental charge, you know, you see mentally it's really hard because you say, yeah, nothing yeah. really. And uh, hopefully we had like 99% who were positive. You know, sometimes we just put video and some they say, oh, it's not like that or what. But for this topic, 
everybody was really, really involved, in, except one or two people who insulted me, really. Um, and uh, the rest, they were really supporting and sharing. And as you said, they hashtag, and etc. So it helped us a lot to, to continue this, uh, this fight. Yes, because yeah. uh, if we let this... If we let this, what no. will be, what will be, can you imagine me? I'm from the diaspora. I can speak French. I can speak English. I can speak Derija. So what is about if she, if she had stole from a, li a small artist from the mountains in uh, Morocco no, it's or not Algeria, fair. who has no tool, no, uh, maybe not internet, but not able to talk, not able to to put everything in the yeah, video. Together. We have these tools of communication, so we are lucky. And we are not only, we are not only doing that for us, we are doing that for small artists and for Amazia culture and Amazia artists who are struggling yeah. every day. And you have somebody who, I don't know why, is doing that maybe for business or maybe because it's a trend. But please, put Amazia people, if you call it Amazia, there is nobody in the staff. They, the, the clip, the video clip has been uh, screened in Berlin, in Germany. The dancers are not Amazia, they are Europeans. Uh, the choreographer in the clip, she put herself at choreographer and after mm -hmm. her... And you think why? You think why someone as big with lots of money wouldn't bother to do the effort to actually get a proper, another, a, a real choreographer to put her... Uh, something original instead of stealing from someone else you think yeah, why I, I, why would you go to youtube when you are a big star and go to youtube and copy exactly the same thing and do it if you like it say as a professional person i would want to find who did this video okay who is this lady russia okay let me where is she let me find her check social media these days it's so easy to find people because the world is very small in this in this you know um, um virtual world that's called internet and it's so easy to find you i found you <laughs> i yeah, saw the you video find. i found you i contacted you it's yeah. easy uh, surely it's she easy. has people who can contact you and say okay i love you what you do i love your work i've got a song i have these lyrics can you do a choreographer uh, uh, dance for uh, you know some design some movements new movements and i'll put your name in it why 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 can't she do that when she is a big star why do you go to youtube and just take it and walk away what happens if someone takes her songs and use them um for instance she sings um in, in a language say she sings a, a lebanese dialect or egyptian I'll take the same music, the same melody, and just do it in English and sing it. What's she going to do? She's going to chase me and say, oh, no, mm -hmm. this is my music. This is my... So why can't we think about others the same way as we think about ourselves? She's an artist. I really hope that she gets the message, personally. I, I really hope that she understands how it makes you feel. Um, as an artist who's working very hard, and like you said, you know, small artist, um, let's say business-wise, but you're not small, you're big, you're amazing, I love your work. Um, so um, just in a, you know, in a business world, you feel that um, you haven't made it yet, but I think you will soon. And I hope that all the other artists today support you um, I hope this lawyer be able to do something, but I think as a person who works in media, as a journalist, um, I, as a journalist and as a TV presenter, I think pressure is this, is media. Um, hashtag and keep going, don't stop, don't just rely on the lawyer, get your friends on the internet and keep, you know, tweeting and writing, put Maria and Paris. Uh, on your tweets and on your writing and your posts and say shame on you you can't do that and you shouldn't do that you're supposed to help us you're supposed to support us and not um, take our ideas and take from us and pretend that it's your work it's it's sorry but it's pathetic yes just to to thank you for your advice first because it's so 
like uh, n not possible that it's it, it happened that a lot of people wrote us like oh we really really used to love this singer but now we cannot how could she do mm. that so the first question i don't have the answer why why i don't have the answer i just know that she also there is a second problem is that there is a documentary about her on netflix and at the end it was during the lockdown in lebanon etc she was pregnant very emotional because we can see the you know the explosion in uh, beirut etc during the documentary and after it was like the coming the coming out like uh, with the new album etc and in the, the documentary in netflix you can see all choreos you know, choreo and you can see my dear <laughs> some walking steps you can connect, walking. you can you can connect or contact you can connect with netflix contact netflix send them your videos who you are point at the exact um dances uh, in in that um in that documentary but trust me rasia uh, registering you as a brand yes is very important because when you are registered as a brand as a verified artist whether you are on spotify or um any of those um uh, apps um then when someone else takes your work like mm. they will recognize it like it happens now in my life they will recognize it and then it'll stop so yes um when your work comes in someone else's work it will it will not be uh, shown even if it's uh, an audio it will be stopped uh, then people will understand that it's you know copyright it's been mm -hmm. it's been protected um i wish you all the best um, Thank i you want so to much. follow up with you in the future and see where you're you're going with that and as a as a, um, an amazigh <laughs> and as someone who loves your work um and a, as a journalist it's my duty to support you so if there's anything i can do please let me know um i will share this um interview soon on my new page i have deleted my previous page for certain reasons before before new year, um new year and so i will open a new page on facebook and i'll share it but i would advise you to start working on twitter also um yeah. and put pressure through media on um Marian Paris um and please uh do your best to protect your art because it's beautiful and i would say from from this you know this screen to Marian Paris or, or to any other artist um you're supposed to support females um a female should support a female instead of um trying to cause problems and make her life more difficult thank you so much so that's so going to our heart really to my heart to have such support of powerful women like you and all the amazing women who came to support and also men to yes. say uh it is the future of our culture that mean uh that means i i always say i'm not an expert I'm not a researcher, I'm not an anthropologist, I'm just somebody who is looking after her roots. Because, for example, yes, I don't talk Amazigh language, I just have few words, because the first generation did not transmit us, and there are a lot of people who don't know their Doesn't roots. Mean you're not. And we are losing more and more and more, so we are tri tri trying to, to, to go back to our culture, to read the language, with the jewelry, with the outfits, with the yenayer, with a lot of things. So it's taking time. And when we see that all these efforts, for example, that I'm making for more than 10 years to promote and first to, to just to know my own, uh, I'm, I'm so lucky because I'm, going, I'm coming from an Amazigh tribe that is in the same village for decades and centuries. So it's easy for me to go, to go through. But I, I talked with, with women who uh, are telling me, ah, I'm from this tribe. Do you have any information with your books, with your experience? And then when we see that, like being fantasy, like mm -hmm. this, me, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, that reminds me colonization and the postcards that they were doing and the video clips that they were doing in black and white, uh, like vintage style. Some, some people call that vintage style. It's like a parody of us. It's like we are not existing anymore. And, and, and it's not normal. You see this. I bought it in Agadir. This is my 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 biggest preferred uh, crow. In Vimeri Amfares, 
she's wearing a Russian crown. A Russian crown. Oh yeah, you know, I saw that on the video it's like, as well. You compare it's the main outfit in her clip that is supposed to represent Amazigh people, but she's representing Russian people in her video clip. This is oh, a lot. Well, well, that's that's a, that's not that's not a, a bad thing. Uh, uh, that's not insulting the Amazigh people. That's insulting her knowledge. Yes, that, that, so this yeah, is not an insult that's a lack of knowledge. People. It's insulting mm. her lack of education and knowledge and her mm. poor, poor art, because this makes all her art very poor. Um, what about the Ministry of Culture in Morocco? Have you approached them? Yes, I tried, but you know, little by little, I have more and more contacts. And uh, what is a good way is that this year in Morocco, because I'm binational, I have the, both uh, citizenships in France and Morocco. So I'm a Moroccan citizenship. Uh, I have this also. Um, I, I'm a Moroccan citizen, sorry. Um, they are working more and more uh, thanks to uh, working um, about a new law. Uh, that is going to protect all the artists. The heritage um, as well. Yeah. Yes, in a stronger true. way. Yes, and it, it is supposed to have like work on that this year. So, um, yes, I have contacts and yeah. uh, I will see, but uh, the media, as you are talking about the media, when we put the first video, yes, local media talk, uh, talked about that also. Mm. Yeah, I think it's extremely important that it comes from Morocco itself. Even the lawyers, they should come from the, the Ministry of Culture lawyers to, to directly go to, to her um, and say, because she loves going to Morocco, doesn't she? She performs in Morocco and this will be a problem for her if she doesn't respond to the Moroccans in Morocco. Mm. They might not uh, receive her in the future if she wants to do a, a concert in Morocco. She needs to think about this one. So maybe that's uh, also uh, important to think about. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you so much. I'm sorry that uh, our interview happened uh, late. Um, I understand it's Ramadan and the time is changing, but I am so proud of you. I really love your videos. I always watch um, your videos that you're very active in your Instagram account. And um, hopefully I'll be able to come and watch you live. <laughs> Inshallah. Tell me about your performance. Next, next performance. When is it happening? Oh. Please connect. The next performance is the first one hour show in France called Amazir Vertex. Okay. In one month, we are working hard. It's Ramadan and in we are May. going to rehearsal in, in May, in end of okay. May. So if you're in Paris, it will be the first one. And then we hope to tour it in Europe and North Africa, inshallah. And I'm going to give you what it is about in a few words. Have you ever seen Amazir superheroes in movies? No, we are all, always the bad ones, like, oh, oh, oh the very poor we, ones. Finish, we are not the hero, yeah. finally. So it's a kind of Wakanda, but only with I Amazon. Love Wakanda. I love her. Mm, when I have oh. been to Wakanda, I, yeah, I just in front of me, there was a, a, a woman with her, her daughter, and the daughter was just like, oh, so excited, so excited. And I was just like, I want to be like you. I'm so excited, excited too, to yeah, see this exciting superheroes and yes you have the bad the good one and it's not about being black or north african be the bad person and white be good the good one everything is melt and it's more complex than that and this is what we are talking about in this uh dance uh show creation professional creation when you go to see that to watch that you sit and you are like in a cinema but it's a dance uh, creation, and I'm very proud of that. And uh, Kid Kid Lady, I thank them because we are really involved in this work, and we are very proud. And what I am very proud about is that that all the artistic uh, team who worked with us—that means people who made the music. Uh, there is a singer, a woman. There is uh, somebody who who did uh, videos um, mixing with futuristic. Uh, videos and Amazir one and the one for the costume they are all North African and the one who is making the flyer is living in Morocco so the team is 100 uh, who is working with us is 100 North African Wonderful. so it's like yes yeah, 100 uh, African Middle East team Wonderful. Yes. So 
Um, please send me uh, a picture of the flyer when it's ready so I can post it oh. with the date, time, location. And yes. I will do all my best to come and watch you and see you in person and yes. support you and see where um, this, um, this case with Marion Ferris goes. Kif Kif, uh, Bloody, uh, as an organization, needs to be registered registered as an organization, as a brand, so no one can steal anything from it is, your hard work. It is, it is uh, well um, we have the organization on which Kifki Bledi is depending, so it is existing for a long time, but this year we registered Kifki Bledi as a brand after this uh, that happened. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much, Rossi. I wish you all Thanks the best so and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.